over here today with Friends of America. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, I'm Matt from Friends of America. I do the singing and the guitaring as well. Both of those things, multitasking. Yeah. So how many other people are there in the band? There were three other people in the band. We got somebody on the old drums and keyboards as well, which is complicated yeah. in itself. He does a bit of this. And um, we got a guitarist and we got a bassist as well. So how would you describe your style of music? Um, we're sort of alternative pop. Um, we listen to a lot of that sort of smoky 80s pop music by stuff like The Cure and stuff. Yeah. But we don't necessarily sound like, like sort of just that air of warmth to it, like just guitar pop music with sort of that warm 80s sound to it. Yeah. But more interesting than I've made it sound. I'm not very <laughs> good at selling it. Yeah. Before we even set foot on a stage, we, we sort of made an agreement and we said, right, we're going to practice. We're going to write the best songs we can for a year before we even let anyone hear it. So for a year, we just rehearsed and we wrote and we recorded. So there wasn't that horrible teething period where you have to watch a band get good yeah. on stage and kind of stick with them. We wanted to go on as a formed unit. We didn't want there to be a teething period. Yeah. So uh, how do you go about writing your songs? Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, we all, we all sort of come together and we, we jam a lot of the time and we, we will just pretty much jam for 20 minutes and pick one and a half seconds of that 20 yeah. minutes ago. That was quite a nice guitar part. Um, I predominantly write the lyrics and that's just based on stuff like books I'm reading or overheard conversations on the train between two drunks <laughs> <laughs> on, the way to, on the way to Glasgow on the weekend or something. Just anything really. Um, we, just, we just try and write anything we can that we think is sincere enough to be heard. That's what we go for. So who are your biggest influences? Um, as like musically, um, as like a lyricist, um, Michael Stipe from R.E.M., Elliot Smith is um, my personal hero. Um, bands like Radiohead and stuff, less for, we, we don't really sound like that, but just more the, the, the stance on there are bands that aren't afraid of success and aren't afraid of being relatively poppy, but they don't really, you know, file off the edges to, to achieve what they want to do. Um, but musically, we're all so, different that it is sort of like a particle accelerator and you just slam all these things together whatever comes out providing it isn't atonal and completely awful um we'll go okay we'll have we'll have a look at that my ears didn't bleed so we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll explore that idea further so we we just sort of try and I mean personally i'm more influenced by writers than musicians but as a band we just all bring our own little alternative and pop influences i love taylor swift really? she's, <laughs> she's my favorite yeah i absolutely really? adore that woman um but we just yeah Pretty much any anything with sincerity, anything with heart, we'll, we'll, we'll more than happy take a look at. And it's best to take influence from everything rather than one particular thing. Yeah. Because of there were so many bands that sounded like a carbon copy of one other band. Yeah. And if you if you've got you know if you've got an Idlewilds, there's already a band called Idlewilds who do what they do, so you don't need another one. Same with Radiohead, same with any band I like. Yeah. So rather than be entirely influenced by the bands I love, we sort of just take stock of what they've done and go, okay, let's do our own thing. Yeah. So have you had any particularly memorable performances? Um, we've had the very first performance um, we had before we were full band. We went on stage and the fire alarm went off. So the gig got cancelled within 45 seconds of starting. Um, we, we launched our album, uh, What It Is To Be. We launched Stan Glasgow to a sold out show um, a couple of weeks ago and that was that was really spectacular just because to put so much hard effort, we, we completely self-record everything we do. We, we've all done audio engineering, so we do it ourselves. Um, and just to be able to be, be on stage and have people responding to something you really work hard on and something that, I mean, we have, we're by far our hardest critics. We throw out more songs than we ever keep just because if I wouldn't, li if I, if I wouldn't buy it, I don't want to charge other people to l listen to it, you know. So we've got incredible, incredibly high standards for what we do, but that's because we've got incredibly high standards for what we listen to. And I think these days you don't have the chance to release a bad record and then develop, as I was saying earlier. Like you need to come out the gate strong, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm really proud of the record we've just played. Okay. So what are your plans for the next year? Um, we're playing Wickerman today, and we're playing. Um, we're going back up to Inverness. We're playing Inverness soon. We're playing Edinburgh. We're going to play some shows in and around Glasgow in October and hopefully we're going to have a big headline show at Christmas in Glasgow and about the areas with some friends of ours. Great, well thank you very much for coming. Well thank you very much. Uh, you're watching Wolfville TV, thanks for watching.